Have you ever wondered if there's an easy answer to the question you always ask yourself when implementing a new system? Which is, whether should I use an abstract class, an interface, or a component? Sometimes, the answer is clear, and one solution stands out clearly from the others. But oftentimes, the disconnection becomes blurry, and it's hard to choose a solution that ensures your system is modular and easy to maintain for the longest time possible. Which is one of the things that define good software in the end. Right? Today, we're going to come up with a guideline or set of questions that will help us answer our main question easily by designing three different systems. And for each system, we're going to test the three solutions to understand by contradicting them what solution is a good fit for the system we are implementing and what are the advantages and disadvantages we get from each solution. There is no right or wrong here. And everything depends on the context and the system's requirements. And changing those requirements can dramatically change our solution as we're going to see. So, without further ado, let's get started with the first system. Let's say we are implementing a health system with the following requirements. There is default health that gets subtracted whenever the entity takes damage. If the health reaches zero, the entity dies. And multiple entities can have health and die in different ways. For example, a character can play a death montage, a vehicle can explode, and the tree can lose its leaves and fall. Later on, other classes might have this behavior as well. Now, let's try each approach and see which one works best. If we take the abstraction approach, we can create a damageable base actor blueprint. We add to it a max health and health variables, a decrement health, as dead, and on death functions. Then we can inherit from it a damageable character, a damageable tree, and a damageable vehicle. But that clearly seems wrong. Our inheritance hierarchy is limiting us from extending existing behavior, like the character class and vehicle class that comes with Unreal, which means we would lose much benefits from subclassing those instead of starting from an actor. What if we later on decided that doors can take damage to be opened or walls to be collapsed? That would mean reparenting all these classes and breaking many things. So, let's try another approach and use interfaces. In the end, they are meant to be used by different classes and help us avoid this inheritance hierarchy. We can create an I damageable interface with the same functions, decrement health, as dead, and on death functions. We can implement that interface in our character, our vehicle, and our tree classes. In each class, we will add two variables to store health and max health, and implement the decrement health and as did functions in the same way, and then implement the on death function differently. Here we can see that our solution is a little better than abstraction. It can work, but it has a duplication problem. The logic for decrementing health and checking death is the same between the three classes. Later on, if we decided to have damageable walls or damageable doors to be opened, we would have to duplicate the same logic. And if that logic changes at any time, we would have to modify it in each of these classes, which is something we don't want to get into. So let's try using components instead. You can create a health component and add the same functions and variables to it with their implementations. And for the on death function, we can use delegation instead and turn it into an event dispatcher for the owner classes to handle it. Inside our character, vehicle, and tree classes, all we need is to add the component and bind to its on death delegate if we want specific behavior on death. Now, if at any moment we decided to change the logic of decrementing health or checking death, all we'll need to do is change it in one place, the component. And if we wanted to add more damageable classes, we would simply give them the component. So, for this case, a composition approach we could find. But why? Because simply, we had common shared behavior between unrelated identities or classes. But what if we had common shared behavior between related classes? Let's say we are trying to make a quest system with the following requirements. A quest has a list of conditions that must be met for the quest to be complete. Each condition has an evaluate function, determine whether that condition was met or not. Each condition can be evaluated in a different way. We can have a location condition that checks if the player is 
at a specific location, a collectible condition that checks if the player has a specific item collected, and the kill condition that checks if the player killed an X amount of some enemy class. You got the idea. So, how can we implement those conditions? If we think about using interfaces, we can create an iQuest condition interface, or we can name it whichever we want, and let it have an evaluate condition function that returns whether it succeeded or failed. That sounds good, but who would implement that interface? Are there multiple identities or classes that can have this behavior, or the condition itself should be a class? Since only conditions are going to have this behavior, meaning an inheritance approach is more suitable here. There's no need to think about components now, as creating something like a quest condition component that won't be used anywhere is totally meaningless. Instead, let's go with the abstraction approach. We can create an abstract quest condition object, let it have an evaluate function, maybe an isMet function, and a reference to the quest it's part of. Since the condition means nothing by its own, we need no default implementation for these functions, and thus making the class abstract makes sense. Then we can subclass it and create a location condition that checks if the player is at a specific location, a collectible condition that checks if the player has a specific item collected, a kill condition that checks if the player killed an X amount of some enemy class. And if at any time we needed new conditions, we would inherit from our base condition object. So, for this case, an abstraction approach worked fine. But why? Because we had common shared behavior between related identities or classes. Now, what if we had uncommon behavior between unrelated identities or classes? In this scenario, we are trying to develop an interaction system where multiple entities can interact in different ways. A common example we see in many games where we can, for example, interact with NPCs to start a dialogue, we can interact with pickups to pick them up, with weapons to shoot with them, with doors to open them, and many entities can be interacted with in the future. If we start with the abstraction approach, we can create a base interactable abstract class that inherits from actor and give it an interact function. But clearly we can see that this inheritance hierarchy limits us from being able to make interactable NPC characters, for example, that inherit from the default character class. So let's try to use components instead. We can create an interaction component, give it an interact function, and then we can start subclassing it. We can have a dialogue interaction component that NPCs have, a pickup interaction component for different items, a weapon interaction component for weapons to shoot, and a door interaction component for doors to interact with. But this seems like an overhead already. A new component class is needed for each new interaction. Wouldn't it be much easier if we simply implement the single interact function that we need? Let's go with the interface approach. We can create an iInteractable interface and simply give it one interact function. And there's no need to have many classes anymore. We can simply implement that interface in any class that allows interaction. So, interfaces seems to be the most suitable approach for this specific case, because we had uncommon behavior between unrelated classes. But what if the requirements change, which is inevitable in software development? What if interactables share some default behavior? For example, every interactable can specify what actors are allowed to interact with, or they can have a flag that indicates if interaction is currently allowed or not. For example, a door might be locked. Or they can have an interaction limit. For example, a pressure plate can only be triggered once or twice. Then, based on those requirements where we now have common behavior, a component approach might be more suitable. And more often, a hybrid approach is even better. We can create an interaction component that has a list of allowed interacting classes, a flag for indicating whether interaction is allowed or not, and an interaction limit integer, in which we update those values from the component or let its owner handle that. Then we can, instead of creating subclasses from this component, mix it with an interface that actors who need unique interaction behavior can implement. We can create an iInteractable interface with an interact method, then our NPC can implement that interface. And inside the interact method, we can check if we are allowed to interact at the moment from the component and then start our dialogue if interaction is allowed from the NPC's class. 
So, multiple entities can handle unique behavior in the interface and keep common behavior inside the component. And this combination of components and interfaces is really common. And interfaces are most used in our deal for easier communication and to avoid tight coupling. So, to summarize, it seems like a good starting point that can help us answer what approach is a better fit is to ask ourselves, are we developing a common or a unique behavior? And is that behavior used across similar identities or classes that share the same inheritance hierarchy or totally unrelated identities? When there is common behavior across unrelated identities, we can use components. When there is unique behavior across unrelated identities, we can use interfaces. When there is common behavior across related identities, we can use abstract classes. And when there is both common and unique behavior, we can use a hybrid approach. But this can only be a starting point. As in real scenarios, multiple factors can affect our decision. An existing inheritance hierarchy can push us towards one approach over the others. And project requirements like optimization and complexity might force us to use another approach. So, if there is one thing to take away from this video, it is that context is king and change is inevitable. So make sure you carefully understand your system design and requirements. Project files can be found in my Patreon. Thank you for anyone who supports this content and would like to see more of it. I recommend taking a look at Breaking Down the Components of Gameplay course from our Reels Learning Portal for further explanation on this topic. That was it for today. Let me know how do you answer this question yourself and what is an interesting system you tried developing that required much thinking to come up with a good answer for. This was Amr, and as always, thank you for making it to the end of this video.